No, thank you very much. I wouldn't be anywhere else. This is a, the, the flight down is nice because we, we look down at the ground and see the marshes and the trees and all the green. And if you go on your devices and you Google up other parts of the world, you see rocks and sand and it just is, it's a, this is, is all the, the uh, video just showed is a, a wonderful place to be. I got to say working with Dwayne Parrish is a, a great privilege and delight. He must be the finest director of parks, recreation, and tourism in the whole world. Thank you, sir. Thank you. <laughs> and Dwayne, I'm sure you can keep your job as long as I keep mine, so we'll, <laughs> we'll work together. <laughs> Speaking of, I started working with Dwayne, he started talking about heads and beds, heads and beds. I thought, what in the world's a man talking about? Finally, I realized that's three words. That's not heads and beds. It's not a single thing. <laughs> Looking at the video, somebody said on there, we all know each other. And uh, we do. And a lot of us related. Lindsey Graham makes the, the joke when he was a young lawyer up in, in uh, Seneca in Oconee County. He said he'd have a lot of country folks come in. They'd ask often the same question in different kinds of ways, and usually it came out something like this. They'd say, well, Lawyer Graham, what we want to know if we married in South Carolina but divorced in Georgia, are we still cousins? <laughs> <laughs> and the answer is yes, of course. <laughs> but uh, you've probably heard the story, maybe you have, about the, the young fellow that went to church. He was a newcomer. It was a big church in the town. And it's the end of the service and people were leaving. It had been a particularly long service. And an elderly lady came down. He was helping her down the steps. And he said, ma'am, I just got to say, I just got to say, that's just about the worst sermon I ever heard. And she says, well, son, do you know who I am? He says, no, ma'am, I don't. He says, well, I'm the preacher's mama. He says, oh, do you know who I am? She says, no, I don't. He said, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> All right. By the way, if you drive as, as I do, I've been going to Pauly's Island since I was a baby. And, uh, <laughs> and if, if you go, there's several different ways to get there. And all the people in Columbia that I know say there are four ways, and each swears that their way is the best way. One, you go through Manning, go through Pinewood and all those places in Manning. The other, you go through King Street. Another one, you go out and turn off I-95. All those different ways. One time, a few years ago, Peggy and I were down at the beach, and I, had to, I was going back and forth to the office. So I went each of those four ways. I was probably the only person that's ever done that, and I measured it the whole, and they're about... Five minutes difference in about five miles is all the difference is in those four ways. So for those of you who've been wondering what is the shortest way from Columbia to Pauly's Island, they're all the shortest way, <laughs> and every way is just beautiful. One thing that we counted one time was there are 83 churches that you can see, I think two synagogues and 80, 81 churches that you can see from the road on Highway 521 and 261. Now, I don't, and some of them you can see the sign. You have to go down the road a little bit, turn off to see the actual church. But there they are. Now, that must be some kind of a world's record. But I'm sure any of those four ways, you could see those same things going through the beautiful countryside to see the nice little towns. And as you well know, all of the towns, the cities in our state are just booming. They're cleaning up. They're growing. We could have picture postcards of just about every one. And I believe that that is just one more thing that makes us unique. The reason people come here is because of the people. As governor, I have, and some as lieutenant governor, had the opportunity to speak to people from all over the world who are looking to invest billions, hundreds of millions and billions of dollars. And I, of course, have asked them, why? Why did you decide on South Carolina? And they always refer to the great technical college system. We have the best in the world. And we are having easy transitions from high school through tech with where you can get dual credit and go on to a four-year school or get your two-year associate degree, which is where the action is these days with these big manufacturing plants and other great things that are coming to South Carolina. The Port of Charleston 
is getting even deeper. It's going to be one of the best in the world before long. And it's, it's big enough. Have you ever seen those ships coming in? We have them coming in now that are carrying 14,000 of those containers. Can you believe that? And Elliot, it is, Elliot somebody knows they're even bigger. The biggest ships out there now carry 23,000 containers. They're about as many above as they are below uh, deck. And I mean, just we, and we have two inland ports, one in Greenville, one, um, excuse me, Greer. The other in Dillon, no other state has that. We have a rail line going from a magnificent port going in. The one at Greer crosses I-85 so the trucks can drop their load there. It goes by Southern Norfolk Southern down to Charleston on the ship, reverse, same thing, and do the same thing in Dillon with 95. Nobody's got that. There's not another state that has that. But these business leaders from around the world in different languages say the reason we're here is because of the people, the people, the people. They say South Carolina is a handshake state. When they give you their word, they keep it. See, people speak to you on the street. They, they, they're your friends. They, want, they talk to you. They don't just bump into you and go around. They, want, they say hello and they'll, everybody, cash, people at the cash register, everything. They say they don't see that anywhere else in the whole world. So we are really, we are living in paradise when the explorers were coming over to the new world back then and writing back, not writing, but carrying the message back to their sovereigns, they were saying that this place that we now call South Carolina is the most beautiful, most lush, most promising place in the whole new world. And it is. With our Judeo-Christian tradition and with our strong military tradition, we have eight bases major bases in our state. As you heard, the Coast Guards go open up their major thing in Charleston. I mean, it's all coming our way, but those true two traditions, our military tradition and our Judeo-Christian tradition, when you plant those in paradise and you have all the challenges that we've had over the years starting in 1670, you end up with some people that are, that are remarkable and that are the envy of the whole world. So we have the people, the people, the people, and we have the places, and all the places and people are all smiling at these visitors. A couple of things I noticed listening to the music there, and also uh, with Darius Rucker, now the, um, officially the ambassador for South Carolina, uh, in his song, Wagon Wheel, which is, I think is his, his biggest one we were talking about a minute ago. If y'all listen to the words that, he's talking about us. He mentions South Carolina, <laughs> uh, North Carolina, mentions coming, leaving New England because it's too cold. That's why everybody is too cold up there. <laughs> <laughs> we got a freezer. We, had a free, we have a bunch of freezers at the mansion. And I sneaked into one last night to get some ice cream. Peggy wasn't looking, so I went in there to get some ice cream. Y'all, it was three degrees. And I, I just, I had on shirt and pants, no coat or nothing. I about froze to death in the time it took me to get the ice cream. Then it dawned on me, some of our friends up north, it's that cold all the time. <laughs> I just can't imagine living in some place like that. But they're all coming to the sunny south. The businesses are coming to the sunny south. And the, the things that we are doing are, it has dawned on me as Marshall McLuhan the philosopher from Canada who wrote in South in 1964, some of you remember, that the medium is the message. The medium is the message. It's not so much what you say, but how you say it. It's not so much what you write, but the fact that it's written. Like this cell phone that I don't have in my pocket now. <laughs> but all of you got one. You know, you can transmit a lot of information on there, but the fact that you have a device that you can transmit that message on and that you can go on and look at the world like I was talking about a minute ago, that is a strong message about the power of technology. Darius Rucker, is, his, his songs are great. His uh, letter of cry will make you cry. His wagon wheel will, will make you, you want to come to the South. But the fact that he, from Charleston, is our ambassador, and he's known around the world, that sends a message, doesn't it? It sends a good message, a comfortable message. Some of y'all won't believe this, but a week and a half ago, Peggy and I were in the pit, that is, in the front row of the KISS concert in Columbia. Were any of y'all there? <laughs> huh? Nobody was there? There's one back there? <laughs> 
Can you hear anything today? <laughs> well, I tell you, we, we were right up close and um, we met with the band before. I, decla- I de- uh, proclaimed that day as Kiss Day and so we got to meet all of them. And then we went out there in the pit and stood and it was, it was quite something, it was loud. <laughs> and then we saw them afterwards and uh, uh, Gene Simmons came up, you know, they wear those big shoes. They, they, he's about 6'2 or 6'3. He's the one that sticks his tongue out to the floor, just about. <laughs> and he had on those big shoes and he was about, about this, this tall. And uh, we, this was after it was over. And of course, you know, he puts fake blood in his mouth and that's part of the attraction. And uh, that's part of the attraction, <laughs> fake blood in your mouth. <laughs> So he says to me, he says, uh, is that an expensive shirt? I had on a white shirt and khaki pants. Being true to South Carolina, I had that on. And I said, well, uh, not so much. Uh, it was a nice shirt. And he gave me a big old bear hug. And so I had that, I got it hanging at the house. I'm going to frame it. It's got that <laughs> blood all over it. And I got his autograph right there. And he told me, he said he was at a, a place where he had a pack of gum in his hand and a piece in his mouth and the lady said, I'll take that from you while you sing, I think it's the Star Spangled Banner. He was opening something up somewhere. So he put the piece of gum on the package and handed her a little package of gum. And after the show, he he left and left her with that package, forgot about it. Well, it later showed up on eBay where somebody bought it for (laughs) $250,000. Now I got a shirt. <laughs> but I'm gonna frame it. <laughs> but as I was watching those, those four men play, and they've been around a long time, and the speakers are as, as big as that wall over there, it is loud, and they're on those platform shoes, and they're all dressed up. It takes two hours to put the makeup on, except for Gene Simmons, it takes him three because the man, the manager, Doc McGee, says he talks so much. But they were, I mean, they were blasting out the song, rock and roll all night, shouted out loud. Some of y'all have heard those. They're they're really, they are good songs. But as I was listening to that, I was thinking, and they gave us a shirt afterwards, T-shirts, and they have this, this tour is the, the last, I can't remember the name of it, it's the final tour, the last tour. They go, what's the name? End of the Road Road Tour. Thank you very much. Thank you. Come on up here. I might need some more help. (laughs) They're going to 80 cities. The first column, the four columns of 20, the first 20 in the United States, the rest are all over the world. And it occurred to me that those, and it's going to take two years. And you ought to see the equipment. They have cranes that come up, big silver cranes, and they take them out over the audience playing those guitars. And uh, Paul Stanley jumps up. He's sort of the front man. He jumps up on a trapeze-like thing and rides out to a platform way towards the back of the room playing the guitar. And the, the, the mammoth, the sound, the explosions, the lights, and that drummer just pounding away. The drummer, by the way, was in the, when we were in the backstage before the thing started, he was on an exercise bicycle. So said, why are you doing that? He said, I got to warm up my legs to play the drums. Well, he played the drums all right because his, his feet were going the whole time. But it occurred to me, those men, they're going around the world to places where they don't speak the language, but the medium is the message. And I think the message that people get from seeing those men sing by the way, Simmons is 70. Paul Stanley is 68, got an artificial hip to replace hip replacement. It don't show, I promise you that, because they, they're moving. But the message must be that America is the strongest, most powerful, most free place in the world <laughs> to produce that. And we have uh, also Another medium, we have the South Carolina Battlefield Preservation Trust. Trust. <laughs> that, by the way, uh, one of the men heading it up, Jim Lighthizer, is Bob Lighthizer's brother who's up there working with the president. But they want to go around and preserve the battlefields in South Carolina. 
We've got over 200 battlefields, skirmishes in battlefields in South Carolina. The historians say that the first shots of the Revolutionary War were shot in New England and the last shots were shot and fired in New England. But the Revolutionary War was won in South Carolina. So, when we preserve these battlefields, what does that do? The young people will go and they will see that was a battlefield and they'll read about it. But it's a battlefield. <clears throat> Men died on those battlefields. They were fighting for something. It's a battlefield. They were fighting. They weren't honking the horn. They weren't hollering out the window. They weren't writing sternly worded letters. It was a battlefield. They were fighting. Well, the medium itself is the message. It says that the people of South Carolina thought that their freedom was important and that they were willing to lay down their lives for it. So all of these things that we are doing, when we bring these tourists in and they, they, they can't resist, we have things they don't have anywhere. We're trying to preserve that, that Gullah culture. Y'all heard the word, I just found this out the other day, I think it's right, you heard Kumbaya, Kumbaya, you've heard that Kumbaya, you know that song? You know what that is? <clears throat> that is Gullah, that comes from Gullah. And it is a, a derivation of come by here, come by here, Kumbaya, come by here, come by here. All these things we've been doing all along, we didn't know where they came from and that's where that came from. But we have all these attractions with, with, again, with our institutions that we've built, what we have through nature and the very best people. If we can show these people, if we can, as we are, are teaching and bringing tourists in, I think some of them, many of them know more about our state and our history than we do because they study it in order to come. But the fact that we are so heavily engaged successfully in tourism is a reflection, not only a, a great reflection of the work and thinking and vision of the people in this room, but also the, the fact that we are teaching people. So tourism, besides being a great industry that provides a lot of jobs and happiness for a lot of people, we are teaching our children, we're teaching others in the country about good things that have happened in this country, great things that are happening now, and even greater things that are coming our way. So this is a great model. Everything is connected to everything else. So I'm here to thank you for doing what you're doing. And also to remember, every chance you get, teach the children to be proud of South Carolina. It is the best place on earth to live, work, or raise a family. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Albert.